God, praise God, amen, hallelujah. How many loves the Lord tonight? We all love the Lord, amen. Good to see you in the house of Jesus tonight. We appreciate you being out on a Wednesday night. Boy, we missed church this last week. Uh, both services we missed church, and um, just it's really good to be back. I appreciate what Brother Justin had to say. and You know, um, what, what's, what's on the inside works its way out. And uh, we do have a tremendous amount of love for the house of God. And many, many tonight do as well that couldn't come. We understand. But for, for you to just keep being faithful like you are to the Lord and His house and His work, it just really speaks wonderfully concerning you. And we really thank God for that. Amen. We uh, appreciate you being out. Appreciate your prayers. Appreciate you walking with the Lord like you do and be a part of the assembly here. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. To God be the glory. God, we love you and worship you tonight, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. Amen. Amen. We appreciate you being out. Appreciate your prayers for the Clausen family. Sister Charlotte lost her brother Jeff. And uh, the funeral is tomorrow in Illinois. So, uh, Brother Michael, Sister Charlotte, been taking it pretty hard. So, uh, please remember them in prayer. Continue to list, lift up Sister Ella May too, as we lost a precious dear brother, Brother Holloway, last week, and uh, what a loss to the church and the kingdom of God here. But, Amen. Um, we believe that uh, heaven welcomed Brother Holloway, so we sure celebrate that, isn't that right? We sure, we sure appreciate that. Amen. Um, I'd like to get your uh, attention to the. 23rd Psalm tonight here just for a few minutes and I'm going to be uh, teaching on, on this little passage the 23rd Psalm it's probably if it, it may be the most quoted passage of all the scriptures of the whole Bible maybe with the exception of John 3.16 but the 23rd Psalm is probably the most quoted, most recognized uh, chapter in all the Bible. And there's uh, a little line that, that I'm going to be looking at tonight specifically. I'm going to deal just for the most part with the fourth verse of this 23rd chapter. Psalms 23, verse 4. And it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And I want to focus on that little line there in the middle of that verse that says, I will fear no evil. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Amen. Thank you for your word tonight, Lord. For the sweet, precious saints of God, these at home, God, these here tonight. Thank you for your work, for your church, God. Thank you for the blood, God, of the cross and Calvary. Thank you for salvation, grace and mercy tonight, God. Thank you for letting us gather here together for a few minutes tonight and be a part of the service of the Lord. We ask you to help us tonight. Help us to be a blessing. Help these that have come out, Lord, to be encouraged, to be blessed by your word, God, tonight. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the church said amen. 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 You can be seated tonight. The Lord bless you. Amen. This 23rd chapter of uh, Psalms is really written from, uh, it's written by King David, but it's written in a sense from a sheep's perspective. It's, it's written a, from a, a, a sheep, part of a sheepfold, uh, and recognizing the Lord God is the shepherd. And, and the first verse, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. This is David speaking again as a sheep. Okay, so just think, think about this when, when you read, read this in some of these verses. You think David is talking from basically the position of a sheep. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, I shall not lack. He goes on in verse 2. says, he makes me to lie down besides green, pa lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. This is, this is the sheep talking about what the shepherd does, how the shepherd protects, 
cares for, guides, protects, blesses, and helps him. Okay, he restores my soul, verse 3. He leads me into paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I'm going to get back to the fourth verse, and that's what I want to deal with here for a few minutes tonight, mostly. But look at verse 5, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David is speaking very confidently of, of, of the shepherd. He's talking very highly of the shepherd. He's boasting, actually, on the shepherd. He's bragging on the shepherd. And th this is my shepherd. He takes care of me. He watches over me. He protects me. He, he guides me. He, he leads me in the right ways. He leads me into the right places. He's... He's got his, uh, his hand is upon me. His, his blessings are on me. His, his, his strength and might and power is all working on my behalf. And so David is really, really, really bragging on the Lord here in, in, this, in this chapter. But here in this fourth verse of this chapter, David makes a very bold, very courageous statement. And he says here, he says, Though I'm walking through the very, very shadow or the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, you know, I don't know that it can get any worse than the, than the shadow of death. I mean, here, here he is in, in, in the shadow of death. Not only the shadow, but he's in the valley of the shadow of death. It's enough to be in a valley, but he's not just in the valley. He's in the valley of the shadow of death. And that is a very dangerous, treacherous, very difficult place to be. Uh, and, and, you know, D David as a sheep, did not apart from having confidence in the shepherd, I don't know that he knew he could survive this. I don't know that I don't know that he knew he could overcome this 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 traumatic of a situation. He says, I am in the shadow of death. But then he goes on to say, I will fear no evil. Now that's a very bold, courageous, confident statement. He said, I'm looking death in the face right now, but I fear no evil. I'm not worried about it. I'm not fretting over it. I'm not wringing my hands over it. I'm not, I'm not trying to find a way out. or I'm not trying to look for a loophole or some wiggle room. I am not worried about it, anything at all. I will fear no evil. And here's why he can say that. He says, for thou art with me. Now, how many is glad the Lord's with you tonight? Amen. Amen. You can make some bold statements when you know the Lord's with you. Hallelujah. You, you, you can really make some bold, courageous statements when you know your God's backing you up. Hallelujah. And that's how David can make that statement. I'll fear no evil. Now, everybody knows we're living in a very evil time right now. The Bible said in 2 Timothy that evil men and seducers are wax worse and worse. Evil is on every side. Brother Justin was just talking about it in his testimony. Evil is on every side around us. Evil men and seducers are wax worse and works. And, and that's the day that we're living in. We're living in a time where they would call evil good and good evil. And we're living in a time where the devil is, is, ever, is a roaring lion walking about sick and even made a vow. His, it's, it's open season on the church. I, the, the enemy knows time is late. He knows his time is running short. And he knows he's on a short chain right now. And so he's trying to do as much damage as he can. But he knows he can only do so much because he knows God's hand is on the church. And God is with the church. And God is for the church. And God's going to take care of his church tonight. Amen. So the devil is as a roaring lion and, and the enemy is, is pouncing and doing all that he can do. And, and we have the world that, that is in the condition that it's in and the terrible, deplorable state that it's in right now. Then, then we have, we have the, the people of the world who are, who are doing just the, just the things that they're doing. It's, it's a God, basically now it's a godless society. And I really kind of hate to say this, but it's almost a godless America right now. 
We have turned our back on the Lord and we've, we've passed laws that, that our forefathers would have never passed. We're seeing things happen right now that we never would have dreamed happen. Ten years ago, we had no idea we'd be facing this very thing we're facing today. America needs to get back to God because we have drifted too far from the shore and too far from God. And we need to get back to God. Come on, y'all. We need to get back to the Lord. And so we're living in a time where evil is on every side and, and treachery and danger and pitfalls and, and obstacles and, 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 and there's, 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 a, there's battles here and there's battles there. And we're living in the middle of a pandemic right now and it's a disease and it's a plague that's taken thousands of people's lives and, and made many hundreds of thousands of people sick. It's a very dangerous time, y'all. And y'all know that, that plagues that plagues and evil and all does not come from God. Plagues come from the devil and evil comes from the devil. It's on every side. But David said, I will fear no evil. He says, it don't matter how bad it gets. I'm not worried about it. Don't matter how much trouble is in the, I'm not worried about it because the Lord is with me. And we're not like ostriches with our heads in the sand. And we're not unaware of the dangers and, and the craziness and the goofiness and the ugliness. We are not unaware of that. But we are not concerned about it because I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. Somebody shout amen. Doesn't matter what kind of evil it is, I'm not going to be afraid of it. Doesn't matter what they say. Doesn't matter how many is against us. Doesn't matter what the odds are for us to make it or not. It doesn't matter the situation at work, the situation at home, the situation up in Washington, the situation down in Montgomery, the situation in wherever, whatever it is, we are not fearful of it. We are not disturbed about it. We're not getting into a corner and crying because we got a shepherd. We have a mighty shepherd that watches over the sheep tonight. And he can say, I will fear no evil because... Thou art with me. And then I saw this before church as I was looking at this little passage. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. In a time of turmoil and difficulty and stress and struggles and anxiety and, and, and men's hearts filling in for fear, looking upon the things coming upon the earth and all kind of people stressing out and freaking out and getting get all, all kind of medicines being sold to try to help people make it through tough times and all the, the, all the all the medicine cabinets are full of people just trying to learn how to cope and handle things in the world and the stress and the pressure and the anxiety y'all I'm telling you there is a comfort that comes from the shepherd his rod and his staff they comfort us when I know my shepherd is with me I feel protected I feel taken care of I feel like I'm going to make it when I just know I know that God's with me. I know I can go through anything as long as I know God's with me. Does that help anybody tonight? The rod and the staff, they comfort me. And our world needs some comfort right now. People need comforting. They need to know that there's a God that can help them and that can provide for them and that can shelter them and, and love on them and keep them. His rod and the, his staff, they comfort me. Now listen again, this is David talking from a sheep's perspective. He's trusting his shepherd. He believes his shepherd can take care of him. He, be, he believes the shepherd's going to lead him to the right places. He's going to guide him. He's going to help him. And he says, my shepherd has a rod. My shepherd has a staff. And that comforts me. Y'all, we have a heavenly father tonight that's got a mighty big rod. God, and he's got a great big staff. He's going to take care of us as little sheep tonight. Hallelujah. So honestly and truthfully, because we know that he is with us, because we know that his rod and his staff, they comfort us. We can lay our heads down on our pillows at night. We can rest. We, we can rest, y'all. Rest is sometimes hard to find. 
but we can rest in the Lord. That's what he said for us to rest in the Lord. And our confidence isn't in man. Our confidence isn't in the systems of the world. The systems of the world are going to fail. They're going to come crashing down. But our confidence is in God. Our confidence is in the only wise God, y'all. The keeper, the sustainer, the creator, the giver of life. Our confidence is in God because he can take care of his church. He'll take care of his people. He'll take care of you and me in Jesus' name. Somebody says, how in the world, how in the world can you keep your head up? Because I'll fear no evil. How in the world can you survive these last days? Well, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not fearing the last days. Too many church folk are fearing what's going on. And I just don't know that that's the Lord, y'all. I just can't believe that's God. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and of a sound mind. And if you have fear, you don't have a sound mind. If fear, if fear is in your mind, your mind is all whacked up. Your mind is all going crazy. You can't live in fear. Come on, fear will kill you. Fear will keep you hit. It'll, it'll slow you up. It'll keep you back. God didn't give you that fear. I say we rebuke it in Jesus' name. And we give you the peace of God and the rest of God and the joy of God. And just rest in the, in the fact that knowing our shepherd will watch over us. Our shepherd will keep us. Our shepherd will direct us. Our shepherd will comfort us. Our shepherd will heal us. Our shepherd will bless us. Our shepherd will do the job. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a little praise in the house here right now. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There is truly a place of no fear. But you got to trust God to do that. You got to trust the shepherd. You, 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 you can't be questioning the shepherd. You can't be getting out of alignment with the shepherd. You know, there's a lot of wolves out there. And there's, there's, there's things that sheep, sheep are helpless without a shepherd. They have nothing but the shepherd to protect them. They can't even fight for themselves. They're totally dependent upon the shepherd. And David, David understood that. David's recognizing that. He says, I, I will fear no evil because you are with me. That's how I can go through what I'm going through. That's how I, I, can, I can survive the storm and I can pass the test and I can win the battle. And I don't worry about the wolves. I don't worry about the coyotes. I don't worry about all the things out there against me because I've got a shepherd that's watching over me. Come on, y'all. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. My shepherd is on my side. Hallelujah. And you think about that little shepherd, that, that little sheep that went astray. That shepherd could have said, oh, he did it on his own. He got himself in trouble. He got his own self out of trouble. That shepherd didn't do that, y'all. He left the 99 to go find the one that was hurting and brought him back into the fold. Because that's the love of the shepherd. Just because we made a mistake or two doesn't mean the shepherd throws us out and Sends us off to the wolves. Because if he did, we'd be eaten by the wolves. And there are wolves on every side. We've got to stay with the sheepfold. And the shepherd is Jesus. Amen. He's the lover of our soul. He's the protector of, of us. He, he's our healer. He's, he's our guide, our director. He's our, he's our sovereign and mighty God. Amen. Because we know that Jesus is with us. We don't have to, we don't have to worry about what's going on in the world. Too many, too many people are freaking out. They're just freaking out. How am I going to make it? Well, it's not, it's not for you to decide that. You have to trust the Lord. How are we going to take care of the things we're facing? And I know we're facing a bunch of stuff. It's not in our hands, y'all. It's in the Lord's hands. And so, therefore, we don't really worry about it. Now, I'm telling everybody, this, this is the place of rest, y'all, that we can get to. And, and, and it, it, it relieves us of pressure. 
And there's enough pressure in this world right now to kill everybody. You just can't let it, you can't let that pressure get to you. You've got to release that to God. You have to give your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. You have to just humble yourself and give, give your burdens to the Lord. Come on, bring them to the cross and lay them at the cross. Lay your burdens there. Lay your troubles there. Lay your struggles there. Give, give your trials to Him. Give your tests to Him. Come on, we're just little sheep that we can't make it without a shepherd. And we, know, we understand that. We're not trying to pretend or trying to fake this thing out. We know if God don't help us, we will not make it. But we know that we can make it with God because God is on our side. Somebody shout amen. I will fear no evil. No matter what the devil says or does, no matter what the world says or does, or what people says or does, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. Threaten us all you want to. We're not afraid of it. Intimidate us all you want to. We're not afraid of it. Peter and the apostles were praying in that, I think, I believe it was Acts 4. And they said, behold their threatenings. They said, now grant to your servants boldness that we can, we can pray and, and, and give us boldness. He wasn't ask, they weren't asking for deliverance. They weren't asking for God. Oh, woe is us. We're all in trouble. They said, behold their threatenings, but God give us boldness. And that's what our church needs today is a baptism of boldness and courage. And I want to rebuke fear tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Our God can send that back to the pit of hell. Fear has no right, has no place, has no position in the church of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Adam. Boy, you're quick to the draw. Amen. Behold, grant to the servants boldness that we may speak thy word. And then that we may see miracles and healings done by the name of the holy child Jesus. That's what they prayed about. God, give us boldness. God, give us courage. That's what God, that's what God told Joshua. In Joshua 1 and 8, he said, be courageous. Come on, take courage, Joshua. You're going to take some land. You can't go there fearful. You can't go there intimidated. Come on, Joshua. Be courageous. Be bold. Come on, go take the land. And I believe God's given us some land, y'all. But we need to rise up and possess what's ours in Jesus' name. You can't do it fearful. You can't live for God. You can't take territory. You can't defeat devils fearful. You need boldness and courage. And you need a backbone. You need to stand your ground. Amen. Hallelujah. Be strong, Joshua. Be of a good courage. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Don't be dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee. That's what David was saying. He said, for thou art with me. That's how come I don't worry about what's going I don't worry about the wolves. I don't worry about the, the, I don't worry about the quicksand. I don't worry about the mountains or the valleys or the shadow of death. I don't worry about, and I just got one thing in mind. I'm following the shepherd. I'm following my God. I'm following my leader and my leader will take care of me. Somebody, I'm not done y'all. Somebody give a look. A mighty praise. Our, our God, our leader, our helper will take care of us. Hallelujah. 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 And I think I preached about this about two Wednesdays ago. The disciples were looking at the storm more than they were looking at Jesus. And we got all kind of folks looking more at the world than we do Jesus. We're looking at all the junk and the craziness and all the, the just the everything. And they're looking at that more than Jesus. David wasn't doing that, y'all. David wasn't doing that. He said, I'm not going to fear evil. My, my confidence is in God. And I'm going to stand my ground right here. And I wish I had somebody in this place tonight say, I'm going to stand my ground right here. And I'm not going to be backed up into a corner anymore. 
And I refuse to be fearful and I'm not intimidated. God's going to baptize us with a fresh baptism of boldness and courage. And we refuse to back up. We refuse to give up. We refuse to quit. We refuse to, to give in, y'all. We're going to stand our ground. We're going to trust the shepherd. We're going to hold on to Jesus. We're going to hold on to the blood-stained hands of our Savior. And He will see us through tonight. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. It's been about a week or two, y'all, so I need to preach tonight. Yes, good. Good. I got some preaching me here. Yes, the devil's a liar. Yes, he will try to intimidate. Yes, right. He will try to cause you to have fear. Yes, right. He'll try to cause you to back up. Yes, and quit your praying and quit your trusting. Yes, right. And quit your following the shepherd. And He'll get you to look around at conditions and things and circumstances. And, and if, if, if circumstances can cause you to, if bad circumstances can, can cause you to be dissuade, dismayed and, and lose confidence in God, the devil will bombard you with bad circumstances. But bad circumstances does not have to cause you to stop serving the Lord. You can serve Him in the middle of bad circumstances. Come on, somebody. You can serve them in the, middle, in the middle of a pandemic. The church can grow in the middle of a pandemic. The church can grow in the middle of the last days. Come on, y'all. We're going to have revival. There's revival coming. A move of God's coming. I believe that with all my heart tonight. Hallelujah. I know there's a falling away, and that's evident as well. But right in the midst of the falling away, there is a revival. And I just choose to believe the good report. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going, to believe, we're going to be like Joshua and Caleb. They were a minority, but they had the, they had, they had the right plan. They, they, there was ten of them against two. But Joshua and Caleb had the right idea. Trust the Lord. God said we, we can do it. We're going to do it. Hey, they said, let's, Scott, they said, let's go up at once. They didn't wait around. They said, let's just go do this now. I like people like that. We need more people like that. Let's do this now. Come on. Let's defeat the devil now. Let's have revival now. Let's have breakthrough now. Let's have healings and miracles now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The people were so doubtful they wanted to stone them. They wanted to stone them. The ten... Negative reports prevailed over the two positive reports. And, it, it, and in that whole spirit, there's a spirit of fear, y'all. It's not just a thing, it's a spirit. And that spirit of fear got on the, those ten and all the, the, all the multitude of Israel. And they said, no way, uh, they're, they're bigger than us. They're, the walls are too big. They got bigger armies. Uh, we are no match against them. But Joshua and Caleb said, come on, we can do this. I, I like that kind of thing. I just like that attitude. It didn't matter what they saw. They knew God was able. They knew God was able that day. David looked at Goliath and he said, you come to me with a spear and a sword and shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. He said, this day the Lord will give us victory. This day I'll bring you down. This day will be revival. I wish somebody would say, this day will bring the death. This day is the day of revival and breakthrough and wonderful things for God. Somebody shout this day. This day. Hallelujah. I can preach it with you or without you. Uh, I, this day. And he didn't wait just to share for Goliath to run to him. He ran to, the, he ran to the enemy. He ran to him. He put his little hand in that little, in that little bag, pulled out one, one little stone and slung it. And that, that, that stone hit that big bad boy right in the right place and he came down just as David prophesied I like what David said he said he prophesied his victory prophesied Israel's victory somebody need to get prophesying to your situation you need to, you need to be like Ezekiel you tell the bones you're going to live come on you're going to be a mighty army one day there's revival coming there's victory coming there's breakthrough coming come on bones you're going to live come on army get up on your feet 
Come on, church. Let's have breakthrough. Come on, church. Let's win this thing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. David ran to the enemy. He wasn't fearful. Saul was the one that should have did it, but he was hiding in his tent. Saul was the man for the job, but he was a coward and a sissy. He was bigger than everybody. He was still a wussy. It took a little lad, maybe Nathan's size. Maybe Nathan's age. I don't know, probably a little bit older than Nathan. But David was a man in his heart. He was a big man inside. Matter of fact, he was bigger than Goliath was inside. Hallelujah, because he served a great big God. And he ran at him. Hallelujah, because he had a confidence and trust. He was speaking boldly, prophetically. He said, this day is a, this day is a red letter day. This day is a day of victory. Some of y'all need to wake up tomorrow and say, today's a day of victory for me. Today's a new day in the Lord. It's a day of breakthrough. It's a day God's going to protect me, guide us, watch over us, bless us. He's going to lead us in the valley. Come on, we're, we may be in the valley, but I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel looked at those bones. That valley, just a valley here again, again, the valley. It was full of dry bones, and they were very dry. But he didn't pay attention to what he saw. God said, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, I don't know, Lord, only you know. He said, prophesy to them. Tell them they're going to live. That's what you have to do sometimes to your situation. Your situation looks dry, lifeless. It looks, it looks like a graveyard just waiting to happen, but you got to tell your situation. Come on, thus saith the Lord, uh, get back up on your feet. Uh, you tell your situation, get back up on your feet. Uh, it's going to be a better day. A better day's coming. Come on, a breakthrough is coming. You'll live in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The little Shunammite woman carried her dead, lifeless baby to the prophet. As she was leaving, they said, it's all well. She said, all is well. With a lifeless baby in her arms. He was a miracle baby. And God gave that baby to her. And now she's carrying him and he's dead. Going to the prophet. And they, they said, it's all well. She said, all is well. She was looking at circumstances. But she knew that there was a God that could pull her through. And pull her son through. And give him a breakthrough. Come on. She had confidence in God. I wish somebody would get your confidence restored. Back in God. Your God can. Your God will. Your God's able. Your Oh, God can do this. Come on, y'all. Quit looking at the deplorable situation. Quit looking at the valley of the shadow of death. And just scream out in your spirit, I'll fear no evil. I'll fear no man. I'll fear no, I'll fear nobody. Amen. I, I won't worry about what man can do to me. I'll trust the Lord. I'm not fearing the situation. I'm not fearing the world. I'm not fearing what's coming on the world right now. We're not fearful of, of all the laws they're making against churches and against people of God. We're not fearful of all that, y'all. We are not of this world. We're of another world. We're of a heavenly world, y'all. We are not of this world. Hallelujah. 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 I know the Bible says that the devil is the little G God of this world. Now, y'all listen to me. He's the little G God of this world, but we are not of this world. We're of another world. We're of a heavenly world, a holy world. We're a peculiar nation. We're a holy people. Come on. We're a, we're a peculiar people. Amen, y'all. We are not of this world. We have a heavenly shepherd that knows the best path to take. He can lead us in the right way. He knows what to do, what not to do. Just trust the shepherd. Just trust the shepherd, y'all. Let's lift our hands to him right now. Jesus, we just trust you, God, tonight. Come on up, Brother Scott. We don't have answers, Jesus. But we trust you, God, as our great shepherd, Lord. You do. You have all the answers, Lord. You know. You know the path we should take, God. You know what the church needs. You know what the world needs, Lord. You know what we all need, Lord. 
You're God, you're not a God that's afar off, but you're a God that's right here at hand tonight, Lord. You're not a shepherd, God, that's left us, Lord, to the wolves of this life. God, to fend for ourselves and to God, to fight these battles on our own, God. But no, you're a shepherd that is with us. You're a shepherd whose rod and your staff, they comfort us. You are that close to us, Lord. You comfort us with your rod and your staff. You are that close to us tonight. And I thank you for this, God, tonight. I thank you for this, God, tonight. I thank you. I thank you there's comfort in you and there's rest in you. And there's peace and safety and security in you, God. We're not fearful, Lord. We're not intimidated, Lord. We're not, we're not backed up into a corner, God, fretting and freaking out, Lord. We're just trusting you, 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 Lord. We won't fear what man can do to us. We're just trusting you, God. God, we're not fearful of the conditions of the world. But our hope is in thee, Lord. Maker of heaven and earth. Our hope is in thee tonight, God. You're a great shepherd, God. You're a great shepherd. And we need you tonight, Lord. We do. We need you, Lord, so much tonight. God, people at home, God, watch it. People throughout our city, our state, God, it, we just need you, Lord, so bad tonight, Lord. But God, you've not left it up to us, Lord, to God try to devise a way out, Lord. You've not left it up to us, Lord, to try to make it happen. But you are the way, you're the truth, you're the life. You are the great shepherd, Lord. You're the door, Lord, to the sheepfold. And we just trust you, God, tonight with everything. Our families, our finances, God, the finances. We just trust you, Lord. Lord, you can make a way where there seemed to be no way. God, you're not bankrupt, Lord. Heaven's not bankrupt. God, you're not freaking out in heaven, Lord, wondering what you're going to do, Lord, to save this world. Lord, you've got it all planned out, God. You've got it all worked out. We just help us to trust and follow, Lord. Help us just to trust and follow, Lord. Help us to just trust and follow, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 I think we should lift our hands in his presence right now. Come on. God, we lift our hands, God, to you in your sanctuary. We lift our hands, God, to you. You said lifting holy hands, God, without wrath and doubting. We lift our hands, Lord, to you, God, tonight. Our great shepherd. Oh, God, our vanguard. Lord, our captain, God, your Lord, our shield. Lord, you're our protector. God, you're our provider, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. We bless you. We bless you, God, tonight. We bless you, God, tonight. We bless you, God, tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. 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 Praise 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 God. 
trust you, Lord. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. We trust you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We trust you tonight, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Ooh, hallelujah. It's great to be in the presence of the Lord tonight. And I feel like we are in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I feel like the Lord's helped us here tonight. Thank you all for coming out. We really do appreciate that. We miss those that couldn't make it tonight. We, um, we'll let you give in the offering. We... <clears throat> Brother Nathan's going to help us with the offer plates tonight. You do whatever you can. Sister Leslie, take care of things you need to take care of. Amen. Uh, give it, do what you can tonight for the offering. We really appreciate that. And the Lord will bless you for that. Those of you that are at home, please remember your giving. And the Lord will bless you for that. And we really do appreciate that so much as well. Amen. We love you, everybody. We appreciate you. Remember 10 o'clock Sunday. I, I think we'll go ahead and have prayer tomorrow night. Here at the church at 6:30. Oh, most of the people are out. All right, all right. We'll we'll just we'll just meet back up Sunday at 10. Then 10, 10 for Sunday school, 11 for worship. Amen. We'll pick our prayer meeting up maybe next week. So, all right, everybody, dismiss in the name of the Lord. Thank you all for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. And whatever you can do in the offering, thank you for that too. Amen. Everybody, have a great week in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you.